Where are you going? Upstairs to my room. Have you taken your chloral? Mother, you know I don't like its effect on me. It's for your own good. Since your father's death, you have not been well. I hate the way it fogs my waking thoughts and invades my dreams. What are they frightened of? I only want to live my life. Father always said that work was the only sure cure for sorrow. Now his work is over, and tomorrow I begin a new endeavour of my own, as a visitor at Millbank Prison. Perhaps it will put me on the path to some new happiness. Truly, I seem to feel something drawing me on. Yes, miss, you're expected. Good morning, Mr. Shillito. You must have been sadly idle, Miss Pryor, since your father's death. No, there has been a great deal to do. But I thought it was time I had a project of my own. And what finer project could there be? <laughs> Let me show you your work. I sense his approval. I feel him looking down on us. You think the dead can see us, Mr. Shillito? Miss Haxby? This is Miss Pryor. Ah, yes, the new visitor. She's timed her arrival well, hasn't she? Now, Miss Pryor, you shall see something. I didn't think there would be so many. 270 women. And they're all of them God's children. We must believe there is hope of salvation for each and every one of them. So, you think you can do some good here, do you? I hope so. At least they may feel there is someone who will listen to them. Of course, you must pass your time with them as you think proper. But take care in your dealings with Millbank's women. Take care of your possessions. We have some of the cleverest thieves in England here. And take care how much you give them of yourself, Miss Pryor. Give a little. They will take all. I think you understand me. Be lost in no time. This is where they spend their days. Nuisance buckets. Get used to that in no time. Would you care to step inside? Could you open the door, please? Ah, here come the women now. Here's a new lady visitor come to take an interest in you. 
Tell her who you are and why you're here. Susan. <clears throat> Pin him, Mom. Here for thieving. How do you find life at Millbank, Pilling? Not so bad, Mom. Thank you. She's used to it, Miss. She's been here before and she'll be back again, no doubt. All right, in you go. You take my advice, Miss. You'll not waste much time on the women on this ward. Women like that, they're no better than animals. But, but you wouldn't say that about all the women here. These are a rather better class. You needn't fear you'll be struck or spat on by them. Good morning, Mrs. Joe. Oh, Miss Ridley, if I might have a word. Flowers grown here, Miss Ridley. Neither grown nor brought here. Flowers are forbidden. Hope you weren't thinking of bringing any in. Jane Oye. Child murderer. Vicious as a needle. Best not to put your face too close, Miss. She could have your eye out. There was a prisoner in a block C who seemed a little different from the others. I believe her name was Dawes. Doors. Now she's a strange one. Keeps herself to herself. No visitors, never receives letters. She says she's a spirit medium. A what? The women are scared of her. They say she calls down spirits to her cell at night. I don't believe a word of it. I would like to visit her. Would you now? Well, no reason why you shouldn't. Mrs. Gerald! There you are, Miss Pryor. Doors. A visitor to see you. Shouldn't you stand and curtsy, Doors, when you have a visitor? What are you working on today? Stockings for soldiers. How long have you been here? Half a year. And how do you like it? How would you like it? I think I would find it a very hard place. But I might be glad to have time alone. Why would you want that? To reflect on the mistakes I had made. To make plans to live a better life. W won't you talk to me? You might find it a comfort. What would you like me to say? That I'm ashamed? Repentant? That I've led a wicked life that I'm determined to be a good girl from now on? No. Not unless that's what you really think and feel. But I'd like you to tell me about your life before you came here. Why? What would you tell me about yours? I think you've come to Millbank to look at women more wretched than yourself. To see if that will comfort you. What? You... I'm not wretched. I'm sure I could report you to Miss Haxby for such insolence. I didn't mean it as insolence. I only spoke what I saw. <laughs> Of course, I didn't report her to the matrons. Perhaps I should have done.
continue your father's great endeavor could be the most inspiring task a man could undertake. To collate and edit another man's unfinished work. Your father was a great historian and a great man. I'd be proud to do it. Not that I'd venture to undertake it without you to guide and assist me. I was willing to help father with his work while he lived, but I did it to please him. His death releases me, Theophilus. Margaret! How did you like it at the prison, Margaret? What does a lady visit actually do? Mr. Shillito says I am to mould the prisoner's characters. <laughs> I'm not sure it's a very good idea. For myself, I feel I know so little of the world we live in now. I hope to learn something from the women there. So many different lives. Is a prison quite the place to study human nature, Maggie? You hardly find the best examples of our species there. <laughs> At least they're alive. And such the trust that still were mine Those stormy winds swept o'er the brine oh, Didn't your brother make a good choice, Margaret? Don't you remember, Mother? I introduced them to each other. So you did? One of your happier ideas. I hope you'll reconsider, Margaret. I'll think about it, but please don't press me. I can be patient. Take as much time as you need. But you must know I long for our marriage. of new prisoners, miss. You'll see how we deal with them. Oh, I had intended to. Here they come. Come on. Come on. Move along now. Come on, get him. Come on. Can you go on, Mark? Come on. Look, Chuck. You again, Williams. Can you? Come on. Then you go. Leave me alone. Come on. Get your hands off. Let's hurry up now. Then you. Come on, girls. Please, Miss Dolem, do it. Keep still. <laughs> come on. Quickly now, come on. Come on, spread out. Spread out. How can you bear it here? It's hard. But I have friends to comfort me. But you have friends here in mm. Millbank? No, I have friends here. You mean spirit friends? Do they speak to you? Yes. They sometimes bring me things, often flowers, violets or orange blossom. Don't you believe me? Uh, I'd like to hear more. If you'll tell me. What do you want to know? How... How you began with these spirits. You've always been with me. Since I was a girl. They comforted me after my mother died and... brought me messages from her. And then I found I could do the same for other people. And I gained a reputation for it. I only ever meant to do good. To help people. And I believe I could help you if you'd let me. In what way? When you come to me, I feel your sorrow. I feel your sorrow like a darkness here. Perhaps I can help you find what you're looking for. And what is that? Don't you know? tell me. About myself? Yes. Well, there isn't a great deal to tell. I live in Chelsea with my mother. My father died six, seven months ago. <clears throat> my brother's married. His wife he used to be my closest friend. Go on. My father was a scholar. I helped him with his work. If he were alive still, I'd be with him in Italy now. Florence, Rome, Perugia, Venice. Florence, 
But instead, I find myself here. With you. Thank you. For what? For talking to me. You give me hope. Do I? They call me Dawes here. Like a servant. If anyone were to say Selena to me now, I think I would turn my head and say, Selena. I have forgotten who that girl was. She might as well be dead. You'll come again, won't you? Soon. Yes. Of course I will. You'll be quite at home here, Miss Dawes. We say the spirit medium's proper home is not in this world, but while she's passing through, what better place to lodge than Vince's spiritual hotel? Hey, Miss Sibring. Mr. Court. A little of the leg now, Miss Dawes. Thank you, sir. beg your pardon, Miss Dawes. There's a lady downstairs asking for you most particular. Are you Miss Dawes? I know you are. Oh, yes, it is you. At last. You don't know why I've come to you? You were brought here by some sorrow, I know that. I was brought here by a dream. Two nights ago, I dreamt of you. Your face. Your name. And then I saw Mr. Vincey's advertisement. And now I have found you. Might you ask why I have to bring you your medicine? I really don't want one. Boyd me. has given notice as a result of the house turning peculiar since Pa's death and hearing noises that she cannot account for in the attic rooms. She has at least recommended a friend of hers who can replace her immediately. Why, if Pa's ghost should walk anywhere, it should be in the attic rooms, is anyone's guess. why you're here. What exactly was your crime? There was no crime. A young girl was brought to me. She was troubled. I found that she could be helped by the spirits, but when the spirit came, he... I lost control of him, and the girl went into a panic and had to be restrained. You lost control? Yes. Then Mrs. Brink, my patron, came in. She was so startled that, that she collapsed and died soon after. How to fright. She had a weak heart. I never knew. It, it was the spirit's fault. But of course, the lawyers didn't believe me. They wanted to make me out to be a murderer. And you insist a spirit should take the blame? Yes. His name is Peter Quick. Then maybe Peter Quick should be in prison and you should be free. Don't make fun of me. I didn't mean to. They have their own kind of punishment. Peter is in as dark a place as me. You think spiritualism is sort of fancy, don't you? If you knew what it was, you'd think it a curse. A curse? I feel you're suffering. I'm not suffering. What do you have inside you that you keep so tightly locked away? 
I know you've lost your father. But there's something else. Something you can't say. Visiting at Millbank. So, from one prison to another. Georgie, look, it's your Aunt Margaret. Look. Well, Georgie, big boy you are. Oh, enormous ankles. <laughs> Dear, am I so terrible? <laughs> You'll get the knack of it when you have one of your own. You know I'll never have one of my own. Does Theophilus not want children? I don't know. I suppose he does. I don't really care. It isn't so bad, Maggie. Marriage. You'll see. How can you say that to me, Helen? Why should I settle for something that isn't so bad? Why should you? Please be sensible. Let's have some tea, shall we? I wanted to tell her about that strange girl in the prison. But she wouldn't understand. Or wouldn't want to hear. She's changed now. Changed and ordinary. Did you come for the demonstration? I'm afraid we've had to cancel it. No. I was curious, that's all. These are the pride of our collection. Casts in wax and plaster made by the spirits themselves. See this? It was made by an infant spirit. It's very fragile. Ah, yes. Many ladies are fascinated by that one. His name is Peter. Quick. Forgive me. No, no. You must have unusual powers of receptivity, Miss... Pryor. Tell me, do you know much about Selina Dawes? Of course I do. She was the most gifted young medium I ever came across. And she was dragged before the courts to be slandered and vilified. 
was the most monstrous miscarriage of justice. If this is so, something must be done to reopen her case. Sadly, we are not recognized by the might of the law. Excuse me. I couldn't help overhearing. I knew Miss Dawes personally and attended many of her dark circles. Such a sweet, gentle girl. I heard my own grandmother speak through her. Do you mean to act on her behalf? I would like to help her very much. This is quite extraordinary, that I should come across this place by chance and meet two people who share my deepest concerns. <laughs> Tell me, can mediums lose control of their spirits? A medium is, of course, just the channel through which the spirits manifest. Some spirits can be very powerful, even dangerous presences. They cannot always be contained. And was Peter Quick like that? Have you seen our portraits of Miss Dawes and Peter Quick? You were not brought here by chance, Miss Pryor. You were directed for a purpose. <gasps> Mar Margaret! You scared me! <laughs> what are you doing here? Are you following me? No, of course not. I I've just come from the museum. Can I ask you... Are you avoiding me? No. But there is something I've been preoccupied with lately. Leave it, Margaret. I, I beg you, I can't bear to see you sinking in, into this folly. I don't know what you mean. I know why you go to the prison, to, to this girl. You want her to bring your father back to you. My father's dead, Theo. Then let him be. Margaret, there is someone here who claims your love. I can be everything to you your father was and more. Forget this stupid meddling with spirits. Good God, you're an intelligent woman. You, you must know it's all shabby trickery. And this girl of yours is nothing but a criminal. She is not. Don't ever say anything like that in my hearing again. Now, please leave me alone. Thank you, Ellis. Vargas, miss. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Fine, I guess. It's miles away. Is your hat, miss? Uh, thank you. This friend of Boyd's, the new girl, I've said I will try her for a month. No more nonsense over ghostly creaks on the staircase. No doubt when you're married, you'll never give a thought for me here all alone and all the trials I have to endure. Perhaps I won't get married, after all. Nonsense. I don't know where you think you'll find a better man than Theophilus Finch. I don't love him, Mother. Love. It grows with time. And if it doesn't, that's neither here nor there. Perhaps we're all haunted by spirits. Perhaps they're all around us, if only we could see them. What a very unpleasant thought. I hope you will not be talking of such things this evening. Ah, yes, Dawes the medium. Must you encourage her, Stephen? You've heard of her? I certainly have. Famous case. Halford Locke was prosecuting. Brilliant man. I remember Dawes the medium. She assaulted that American woman's daughter, throttled her, they said. And the other woman, Banks, was that her name? Mrs. Brink. And Dawes is quite definite that she's innocent. She says a spirit did it all. Peter Quick was his name. <laughs> what wicked nonsense. Perhaps it's the simple truth. I think I would say a spirit did it if I were her. I'm surprised we don't hear that defence more often in court. It was the spirits done it, Your Honour. <laughs> she's not like that, Stephen. She seems... Well, quite guileless. The essence of a confidence trickster is that he gains your confidence. <laughs> Couldn't you admit the possibility of a medium who truly believes, who intends to do good, and does do good? Perhaps. But my guess is that Peter Quick is most likely sitting in a public house at this very moment, toasting his poor, silly sweetheart, who took the punishment for his crime as well as hers. <laughs> <laughs>
My mother used to come to me in spirit and lay her hand on my brow. Weren't you frightened? Why should I be? She loved me. Not all my spirits were so kind. I always felt I had the gift. So you began to help people? When I was 12. And you took money for that? I never asked for money. People gave what they wanted. People like yourself. I was often a guest at houses in Chelsea, you know. So, was it there you met the girl you were charged with harming? No, that was later. Why do you want to know so much about me? Are you going to write it in a book? No, I do keep a journal, but no one else sees it. Would you mind if I wrote about you? No. I already knew. Did you? Don't you know the spirits see everything? Even if you write your secrets late at night, with the door made fast and the lamp turned low. So, you know all my thoughts? Not all. Only what they tell me. But they are with you now, all the time, my spirits. Haven't you felt their presence yet? At night, when everything is quiet, kind of whispering. Haven't you felt their presence in your dreams? I think you have. I... No, I must go. But will you come again? Yes, but I should, should help make inquiries about your case, Dawes. Thank you. Perhaps I may be able to help you. Goodbye, Dawes. In a hurry today, are we? No, not at all. A word of advice, miss. If any of them ask you to carry messages, you must refuse. It'll be a message to a pal, miss. A sweetheart, if you follow me. It happens in every prison. It's a loneliness. You must watch out no one tries to make a pal of you, miss. About these flowers? No, Miss Pryor. Margaret! <sighs> really? What is all this noise about? Look! Orange blossom in winter. Orange blossom? Well, I don't know how it got here. No doubt he tipped off the maids to keep quiet about he? it. Who? Why, who else but Theophilus? Here's a fine time to come to table. Had important work to do. <clears throat> important work, it would be. We were afraid you'd grown too fine to eat with us. I doubt that day will ever come, Mr. Vincy. Well, with your rare gifts, you should be able to look into the future and tell us that. <laughs> <laughs> he was glad enough to come here in the first place. Now I think you've got your eye on better things. Isn't that right, Mr. Brick? Yes. Mr. Court? Yes. It wouldn't be hard to find something better than Mrs. Vincey's rabbit stew. As though you'd know better. My husband took you in out of the kindness of his heart. And don't think I haven't seen you cutting your eyes at him. <laughs> Do you think I'd look twice at a flabby old pig like that? <laughs> you little slut. Get out of here. This moment! With pleasure, ma'am. This little slut has been invited by Mrs. Brink to live with her at Sydenham. And that's where she's going. 
tumor on the brain. It's there already, I can see it growing. Apoplexy. Very sudden. Could be any time. Bye bye. These were my mother's things. And I want you to have them. Thank you. Do you think we might try later? Do you think she might come to me tonight? Close your eyes. She's near. I can feel her near. Marjorie, I'm here. We were good girl today, Marjorie. Was I? Was I? You were a very good girl. Was I three kisses worth of good? Close your eyes. is when a woman has a fit and smashes up her cell. Will you come and see her? We have the means to deal with the most violent prisoners. The gypsy is shackled to Miss Axby. She has a straight coat on, but not the gag. The dark and the cold are usually enough after a night or two. You'll be in here a month. You hear? You've been very foolish. We're disappointed in you. Just because your visits have been stopped, you've spoiled your cell and hurt your own head. Is that what you wanted? I must hurt something. I shall call on you again tomorrow. We shall see how sorry you are after a night in the dark. Don't you pass on the look of me, you cat. 
Don't leave me, Miss Huxley! I'll be good! I'll stop it! It's barbaric. How could you leave her in the dark like that? The darkness is the punishment, Miss Pryor. We find it works very well. Will you come up? I've been meaning to discuss your progress with you. My progress? You'll be glad to hear that my matrons have reported favorably of you, by and large. I hadn't realized I was going to be the subject of reports. Oh, yes. We do wonder whether your interest in some of our prisoners might not be a little more specific than it ought to be. One prisoner in particular. I presume you mean Selina Dawes? Yes, I do take a special interest in her. I feel the rigours of prison life tell on her more than on the other women. But I think my visits have helped her. They've given her hope. Perhaps too much hope, Miss Pryor. She still has three years to serve. You're not forbidding me to visit her, Miss Haxby. No. But you would oblige me and my staff if in future you would visit her less and keep those visits brief. <laughs> So what will you do? Will you forsake me now? No. I won't do as they say. I won't abandon you. Thank you. I feel the thought of light stretching between us, connecting us. You know, I shall have to be very careful. Margaret, you may go. Margaret, I will not have you upsetting the maids. I wasn't accusing them. If they were going to steal from you, wouldn't they choose something of value? Why steal your locket? It was valuable to me. I only thought that one of them might have broken it and been afraid to tell. Well, you have asked and they have denied it. So let that be an end to it. It wasn't the locket I cared for. It was what lay inside it. The curl of Helen's hair that she cut from her own head and told me I must keep. In the days when she said she loved me, before she buried that love and married my brother. Mama used to let me brush her hair sometimes. <laughs> Selina, have you been thinking about what I asked? About materialising other forms? Yes. I've prayed for guidance and I've been visited. Visited? By whom? By my guide. My control. He has shown himself to me at last. So... What must I do? You must send out for six or seven of your friends. Not more than ten at most. We will hold a dark circle here tomorrow night. Um, Miss Dawes has told me it is essential that we are all very quiet and very still. Him his name, Miss Dawes. 
What are you called? Spirit? Peter Quick. My name is Peter Quick. <sighs> will, you, will you pass among us? We spirits have no rest. Does the name Bertie mean anything to any lady here? A lady by the name of Ada. Oh, yes. My poor husband, Albert. He wants you to know that all his pain is gone. He asks you to forgive him, Ada. He says you will know what for. Tell him I forgave him long ago. Oh, he's happy to hear it. He longs for the time when you will join him. <sighs> Who calls me? Ah! cord of light that spins from Millbank to here. The thread that connects us. I have to be aware of the forces she is unleashing in me. But I know, if I'm careful, there is nothing to fear. Good morning, Mrs. Joe. Good morning, Miss Pryor. Miss Ridley has other pressing duties, so I was asked to look after you. I'm afraid the women are not to be visited today. So, is there any other part of the prison you'd like to see? I'm in your hands, Mrs. Jelf. This is where we keep the prisoners' gowns. Every size you can imagine, Miss Pryor. But only one pattern for all. And over here are the matron's uniforms. No choice for us, either. Look at the boots the poor souls have to wear. These would fit you, I think. This is your own clothes room. Each prisoner has her own box. She must be able to take out what she brought here. Would you like to look at one? Aren't we intruding on their privacy? Privacy? To surrender all of that when they come in here, poor things. Look. There it holds. Sulfur. This must be 20 years old at least. Oh, and a wedding ring. Quite black now. And this. She'll be keeping it for a hairpiece. Her own hair will be white by the time she gets it back. Yes. Is there anyone else's box you'd like to look at, Miss Pryor? Aye. some smelling salts from the surgeon's office. But should I leave you? If you were to fall... I won't fall. You're very kind.
Thank you, Mrs. Joffrey. What was Mrs. Jelf doing taking me there? Was it some trap set by Miss Ridley to catch me out? been asking after you, Miss Pryor. Thank you, Mrs. Jelf. I wasn't sure if you'd come, but I can't stay long. I've been thinking of you. I think of you all the time. Well, this is so wrong. No. We've gone past all that, you and I. Yes. orange blonde. But how could you have sent them? I couldn't have sent them if you hadn't longed for them to come. You know my spirits keep me here. Not Ridley or Haxby or Jelf. My spirits could free me in a second. And why haven't they set you free before? Because they were waiting for the time. They were waiting for you to come. Selena, please don't. I beg your pardon, Miss Pryor, but I'm glad you'll hear what I have to say. I have good news for you, Dawes. You may sit. Thanks to your good conduct, you are to be transferred to Aylesbury Prison. The regime there is less severe. You'll be treated almost like a lady. So what do you make of that, Dawes? I won't, I won't go. Won't. There's no won't here, Dawes. You must go. Mrs. Jell. Miss Pretty. Come on, you. Mr. Mr. Dance, your face is very curious. My father used to draw faces like yours when I was a girl. When the page is turned upside down, you see another face there. Stephen, do you remember? I too, but I think you're being a bit hard on Mr. Dance, Maggie. Don't mind me. You should stand on your head, Mr. Dance. Let us see the other face you keep hidden there. <laughs> Jolly good for tuppence, I would. <laughs> so should Miss Haxby and Miss Ridley. And so should you, Mr. Shillito. I would very much like to see the faces you hide as well. Who is Miss Haxby? Uh, Miss Haxby is the governor of the women's prison. I'm afraid there was a rather disturbing incident today. A young woman broke out and attacked and injured her. And now she is in the docks. And it's all because of me. No, no, no. Your influence has been nothing but good. I suppose you must have seen some pretty wretched scenes there, haven't you? Yes, I have. 
You see in the chain room and the dark cell. The chain room has shackles and straight coats and hobbles. A hobble fastens a woman's wrists and ankles to her thighs, so she must be fed like a baby. And if she soils herself, she is left in her own dirt. Oh. Margaret. Not the right time, Margaret. There's a girl in the dark cell now. And, well, I wish I were with her, because I deserve to be. And I don't want to be anywhere else. Certainly not here. Excuse me. Excuse me. Perhaps you should go to her. Uh, of course. No. Allow me. I know what this is. How very unfortunate. I feel responsible. Clearly the prison has been a little too much for her. <laughs> Please go away. <laughs> I understand what this is all about. How could you possibly understand? I was wrong to speak of your friend as I did the other day. Perhaps she is innocent. In, in any case, I am sorry she's suffering. Of course you care about her. You should care about her. But what you want from her, you must know it's wrong. You want her to bring your father back to you. <laughs> and I know why, but it is like a sickness with you, Margaret. You must free yourself. The first love isn't always the best or, or the greatest. You feel you belong to him always. I understand that. I, I don't know what you're talking about. You do. You do. I see it in your eyes. Come, look at me. Do you know how much I want you? <laughs> You do know how much I want you. No, not now, please. Not now, when? No. I should have done this a long time ago. I have your consent. Do not. No. Let me erase his mark upon you. No. You'll see the young bull's no. strength outstrips the old. I don't want this. Do you understand? I love someone else. Vigus! Vigus! Get out! Better get off her, sir. Can't you tell when a woman don't want you? I don't think he'll be coming back, miss. What is your name? Agnes. Agnes Destair. Come here, Agnes. Feel these knots. Are they good and tight? Tight. I think too tight. I think you have hurt her, sir. You know, it is for your sake I do this. Yes, Peter. I am all your power. I know you are. Why are you trembling, Agnes? I don't know, sir. Yes, you do. You have the gift. Maybe one of these nights I'll come to you instead of her. Would you like that? I don't know, sir. <laughs> your eyes. And call him silently in your very soul. He will come. It's a 
darkness, Peter. Nothing that happens in this room must be spoken of outside it. You must keep the spirit secrets. Can you keep a secret, Agnes? Yes, sir. To develop your powers, you must let your spirit be used. Your prayer must always be, may I be used. Say it, Selina. May I be used. Agnes? May I be used. Selina? Now you, Agnes. But please, sir. May I be used? Say it. May I be used? better that she's kept in solitary confinement. She's dangerous, Miss Pryor. Not to me. I know she did a terrible thing, but I'm sure she has learnt her lesson. If she is kept alone, not allowed visitors, I think she will go mad or die. Miss Haxby, let me visit her. If she harms me, I, I will take the consequences. Very well. But at your own risk. Mrs. Jelf, don't forsake me. What is it? Um, 
What's the matter? No, nothing. It's simply I wish to leave. Something I, I I must go back for. father made for you. That gives you quite a decent income with a substantial degree of liquidity in the bank. Liquidity? Already cash. <laughs> there, you see? All of it yours and yours alone. Unless, of course, you marry. I see. Mm. And could I draw on this income wherever I live? What is it, Margaret? What are you planning? I was thinking of going abroad. With whom? Alone. Or with some companion. Not as a bride? With your husband? No. Have you told Mother of this plan? No. And I wish you would not either. You know that Mother or I must countersign the order for the bank. No, I didn't know that. He told me it was my money. Well, it is, but held in trust. Let me have it, Stephen. Isn't this all rather hasty? No, I... I have been thinking of this for some time. You've not been well, Margaret. I'm perfectly well now. Truly. Stephen. Oh, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you. Let me think about it, Margaret. It's a big step for you to take. You should think very carefully, too. Shall we say, if you still feel the same, in a month's time? Yes, of course. You're right. Oh! oh. oh Let me. Oh. <clears throat> Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're not cross with me. No, of course not. <laughs> Did I tell you Theophilus has refused my invitation for dinner on Saturday? Yes, Mother. A previous engagement. Oh, he's gone for good. You've lost him. You've driven him away with your hysterical behaviour. I don't care, Mother. I never liked him. You are a stupid girl. So, are you happy now? Yes. I am. Do you think I never had my dreams and preferences? I never really liked your father very much. But I wanted to experience marriage. And motherhood. Well, at least I suppose I shall have some companionship in my old age. Your aunt has asked us to go and stay with her in Warwickshire. We might as well go on Monday. I don't want to go to my aunt's mother. Wanting has nothing to do with it. Well, I won't go. Wild horses wouldn't drag me there. How do you like that?
Sunday is finally here, and Mother has left for Warwickshire. Everything is working for us. I cannot help but believe it is the spirits. Mr. Treadlercott? Is there something wrong? Follow me, please. Please sit down, Miss Pryor. I don't understand. Is there some problem? None whatsoever, Miss Pryor. Miss Pryor? Yes, all of them. You can deliver today? Of course. You don't wish to try them first. They're not for me. There you are, Miss Pryor. Thank you, Mrs. Jelf. I've done everything. Passports, money, the boat, things to wear. Lots of them. What else should I do? Just sit and wait and think of me. I will come to you before dawn. Just as the flowers came. Just as my plait of hair came. You must keep a single candle next to you burning through the night. How can you come to me through the empty air? What is there between my mouth and your bare arm? I'm sorry. Oh, my 
darling, you've nothing to be sorry about. Soon. I'll be waiting. Good night, Dawes. Good night, Mrs. Jelf. Good night, Miss Pry. Good night, Dawes. See how quietly she lies there. Yes. I wish all the matrons of Melbank were as kind as you, Mrs. Jell. Good night, Miss Pryor. I shall go to bed early tonight, and I think you may as well do the same. Right, Your Honours. If I... If I become frightened and call you, you will come? Of course, Miss. Good night. You tried. You tried. I know you tried. No, oh, my poor darling. Well, miss, I never thought I'd see you here again so soon. They'll come down hard on us over this, you can be sure of that. Oh, you're bright and early, Miss Pryor. I suppose you've come to look at the cell. I've come to visit Selina Dawes. Then you don't know? No one. See for yourself. Dawes has gone. <sighs> oh, no. Escaped! But she can't have. There's not a thing out of order. Not a single lock broken or opened. The women say the devil came and took her. Oh, God. She may be... Anywhere at all. What time was that? When they found she'd gone? At six. When they came to knock the women up. What time did she go? Who can say? The night matron saw her sleeping or pretending to at midnight. She's had help, that's for sure. She didn't come to see you, Miss Pryor. <laughs> Why would you think that? Because you were soft on her, of course. The whole prison talked about it. How dare you speak to me like that? If you're sheltering her, you know you must step her up to us. And then it will be your turn for correction. We like having ladies here at Millbank.
I thought she might come here. Uh, perhaps she's still on her way. Perhaps she's still with the spirits. The spirits? What did they say at Millbank? They said she must have had help to escape. But who would have helped her? Who ever cared about her except for me? And you? Oh, Miss Pry, I'm ruined now. They will know. I will be tried. Do you think I'm very wicked? She brought my little boy to me, you see. He sent me messages through her from the other side. He sent me kisses through her own mouth. He sent me this. Look. But that isn't... The angels cut that from his little head in heaven. Oh, God. So you see, had he done anything for her? And it wasn't difficult. I walked out with her myself last night at nine o'clock. I dressed her as a matron. I said she was Miss Craven with a bad sore throat. And that she'd lost her voice. Well, at nine o'clock. Then where is she now? She said she'd come to me. But now I think she's betrayed us both. She'll be somewhere far away with Ruth Vigas. What are you talking about? V Vigas is my servant. She was Selena's maid before that. Didn't you know? You took her in. She told me you'd done that for her sake. Selena's maid? Yes. They sent each other messages through me and other things. a favor. Madeline is such a good friend of Agnes to stare. Now, I understand Agnes has never felt so well. I wonder, could Miss Dawes try developing Madeline's powers too? I'm frightened. There's no need to be frightened. Peter comes to do us good. Say it. May I be used? So, whose girl are you? Oh, Miss Dawes! Don't let him come any closer! I'm afraid! What? Have I come all this way for nothing? Don't cry. Peter will be gentle with you. Just say the words. May I be used? No. No, I don't like it. I want to go. What's this, you silly little girl? Do you want to be made better or not? No! No! Please! Hold her! Stop her screaming! Please. Oh, my God, be careful with her. Now, you little bitch! No! No! I said hold her! Mrs. Briggs! Mrs. Briggs! What is it? Are you injured? Mrs. Briggs! Mrs. Briggs! What is it, Miss Dawes? Are you hurt? Please, her! Shut your mouth! No. Shut up! No. Selena? Are you there? What's happening? Rose? God. 
Thank you, Alice. Fine, is Miss. Of course, Miss. Selina, my affinity. You will be in sunlight soon. Rome, Florence, Venice, the places I long to visit with you. There is no longing in me now. You have taken all that. You have the last thread of my heart. I wonder, when the thread grows slack, will you feel it? Remember whose girl you are. 